God, nothing like a good tea to warm you up when it's cold. Welcome to episode number 28. Here in Sweden, things are becoming a bit chilly as the autumn is here and the winter is approaching. The good thing is, Sweden, here, the houses and the transport, everything is incredibly cozy, so it's not a big problem. But I digress. Welcome to episode number 28. In this episode, we are gonna be discussing planning your shots and how much in depth you have to go when planning your shots. So without further ado, Let's get started with this episode number 28. As I was browsing the internet, I found this one shot from Roger Rabbit where they go from planning all the way to actually the final shot. I feel like planning for your shots is incredibly important and it's something that can be easily overlooked. I know that I've certainly have overlooked it and it's really important not to forget that planning is key to actually get your shots to be as entertaining as possible. Uh, the reason why the shot from Roger Rabbit was so interesting, it's because in this movie, Richard Williams had to mix both real elements with 2D animation. He not only had to plan what the animation was doing, he also had to plan how the animation was going to go within the live action. So as you can see, the first little piece of reference that you get on the shot, it's basically like this rough sketch. And I'm assuming here, this little drawing, this little sketch, most likely was um, part of what the director uh, was trying to address on this specific beat. So it's a nice way to convey with the drawing what the director intended. The next little piece of uh, art that you get. So you can see already in this other vignette that is Mickey and Bugs Bunny trying to help him out. Now, I think what happened after this point was most likely that they decided to shoot the live action as you can see here. And they gave the main actor two points of reference for him to actually focus while he's acting. Now, this is incredibly interesting because I think at this point in time, this was very much like a avant-garde kind of movie. It has been done before to actually have 2D and live action like Mary Poppins, but I think this was actually kind of a taking things further. So you can see that the actor has a harness and has cables, and then he has only like two poles to kind of signify where Mickey and Bugs Bunny are gonna be placed in the animation. So naturally, the step after that is then reconcile the live action and then the animation, the 2D animation. I think it's incredibly interesting to see how Richard Williams and the, the team, how they blended the 2D animation and the live action. Here on this last piece of, um, of art, you can see that, you can almost see the stencils of uh, Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny right next to each other, and they almost don't blend very well with the live action. So if the movie was shot this way, most likely the suspension of disbelief wouldn't have been as good as it was when the movie came out. So in the final piece, which I'll showcase next, you'll see that actually the whole scene blends together perfectly and is incredibly smooth, especially for the time that the movie came out. And it's really, really entertaining. Let's watch it. amazing. I love to watch Roger Rabbit from time to time because I think it's an amazing movie that achieved so much. So all this talk about Roger Rabbit, it's all to say this. 
whenever you actually want to plan your shots. It doesn't matter if it's a small one shot that is 100 frames or if it's actually like a short film or a feature film. Make sure you go in with as much detail as possible. Also, throw that stuff in into Final Cut or Premiere and put it together in a sequential manner so you can have a feel for the tempo and how do you feel about your story when you visualize it with just single drawings spaced out at different lengths because that will actually give you a very different feeling of what you have in your head before you go into animation, into Maya, into 3D because that gets really involved. If you do it all in storyboard manner, if you plan it out really, really well, drawing by drawing, sequence by sequence, shot by shot, it means that you just have one drawing that is slightly misplaced and you can either replace that drawing or do another one that works better or maybe two. So that's what I would like to actually drive with this video. Even if you have to rush and get a shot done within a certain amount of time, just thinking about your shots just a little bit before you jump into animation, do some drawings, some doodles, uh, maybe. Just that is enough to actually kind of get you down to have a better idea of what you're gonna do. Now, as a last piece of advice, I would like to actually kind of point you guys to a Pixar side-by-side -side, uh, movie series. It's like a, a playlist. And I highly suggest you guys go and check it out because they have so many um, iconic shots from movies that dropped recently. And they have the storyboards and then the final product side-by-side -side or top to bottom. And you can see exactly the things they've changed as the movie progressed and also how tight the, the storyboarding is at Pixar. Because at the end of the day, especially in animation, the storyboards need to be incredibly tight in order to avoid rework of animation. So this is a little storyboard example that I found from Bao, um, a short that released not long ago that I found incredibly inspiring. Here's a little snippet and then I suggest you guys go and watch the rest at Pixar's uh, channel. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, I'm actually focusing on making sure that these videos are small. Also, just a reminder, um, I have opened up a shop where I sell these hats here and also stickers. So if you guys are interested, please head over to the shop. I leave a link in the video and also down at the bottom. Also on last week's video, I actually uh, had an interview with John and we talked a little bit about the behind the scenes of a Studio Ghibli movie and uh, how inspiring that is. So please let me know down below in the comments what were the animation movies that had the best behind the scenes according to you because i love to know about other people's movies maybe something that i haven't watched before something that i should check out and i haven't so far so please do let me know what are your favorite movies so that was all i had for you guys this week i hope you guys enjoyed it and it took something useful from this video as always, have a great rest of the week, and until then, stay well, stay safe. Peace!